Hello and welcome to the Concord City Auditorium. I'm Carol Bagan, a friend of the Audi. As you can see from the sign, Concord City Auditorium has been here since 1904 and is coming now into its 117th season of community-based arts and entertainment accessible and available to all the members of our community. You may wonder how this started. About 1900, when all of the towns in New Hampshire were starting to stop, were stopping felling their trees and starting to feel their oats, they all wanted to have community centers, big municipal centers, with their own city halls and own city facilities. At that time, Concord City Hall and municipal space was, sh was shared with Merrimack County down at the old uh, yellow courthouse down on North Main Street. And the city fathers determined that it was time for Concord to have its own quarters. They wanted to have a city office building and a special auditorium space where the community could get together as one and enjoy their activities together. This was going on all over the state and the different communities all built their city halls and had adjoining opera houses, so-called opera houses, even though they were more vaudeville and community show than opera. And so we have an opera house in Lebanon, Claremont, Newport, Littleton, Rochester, and so on, but no opera house in Concord. And the reason was Concord already had an opera house. The Patriot Building around the corner here on Main and, uh, Main and Park Street, at the corner of Main and Park, was owned by Benjamin White the husband of Armenia White. Then along came the city of Concord with a great plan to have their own opera house. And Mr. White went to court to stop the city of Concord. The mayor at the time was Charles Corning, his brother-in-law, and he took Charles Corning to court. And they agreed about everything. They were family and good friends, but foes about the opera house and Mr. White tried to stop Concord from having an opera house. This fight went on for two years and finally was resolved in 1902. Concord won and could go ahead and build an auditorium, couldn't call it an opera house. So Concord City Auditorium is basically Concord's opera, Concord City Opera House, like all of the other towns in New Hampshire have opera houses. And both theaters survived and thrived and did really well. And it's a good thing that Mr. White lost to Mr. Corning because White's Opera House burned down in a grand fire in the mid-1920s, actually during the Fire Prevention Week of, I think, 1923. And since 1904, since November 1904, it has been the home of Concord's community-based arts and entertainment and it was the home of the community players founded here in 1927, the Community Concert Association in 1930. Uh, the first dance recital in Concord was held here in 1944 with Tommy Demers's dance company and the Barbershop Quartet started here. The Bar Festival of Barbershop Harmony started here in 1950. Many, many, the Walker Lectures have been here since 1904. The symbol of the auditorium is the traditional New England symbol of welcome. When the clipper ships came in in the 17 and 1800s from the tropics, they brought pineapples with them. They were really special treats up here in the cold world. And when a a ship's captain came home, he would take a pineapple and stick it on his doorpost. And that was a simple symbol that he was home and all were welcome. So the, when we saved the auditorium, we found the pine, a little golden pineapple, which is right inside the door up on a shelf. And we have another golden pineapple over the door of the auditorium here at number two Prince Street. And it welcomes all who come here to this theater and we welcome you now to come inside. So starting in 1904, 
through decades, through the First World War, the Depression, the Second World War, the Korean War, the city's floods and ups and downs and economic boons and busts, the city auditorium just plugged along and thrived as the home of the community's A&E. And then in the 1980s, the members, some members of the city government looking through the wall, thinking through the wall on the side of the city hall into its neighbor, the auditorium, thought, oh, that silly old auditorium, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had office space there? And they proposed changing the theater altogether, closing it and knocking it, knocking through and con converting this wonderful historic auditorium into three floors of office space. And the people who used it, the families and the friends and the generations that had been here and the groups that used it said, oh, no, 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 you don't. It's not your theater, it's our theater. This place belongs to the people and the families of Concord. And so the groups which used the auditorium, some 30 of them got together and they agreed to work together and formed an organization called the Friends of the Concord City Auditorium. In the summer of 1991, threatened with the clo closure and loss of this theater, this community mobilized and created a new organization which they called the Friends of the Concord City Auditorium with the mission to preserve and maintain our historic municipal theater and to for foster its affordable, accessible use for the benefit of all of the people of our community. They had certain basic guiding principles. One was there would be no paid staff. Everyone is a volunteer. Everyone has a gift. You can be an usher. You can bake cookies. You can bake scenery. You can act. You can sing. You can sell tickets. You can help with the landscaping. You can help us clean up after a show. Everybody can do something. It's like the story of the little drummer boy. What gift can I bring? Everyone has a gift and every gift counts. So they said, no paid staff. We're all volunteers. The second is there would be no feasibility studies until we had picked every single local expert brain. And the third was every possible dime would be spent in the local economy. And the reason is that we believe in the economic multiplier. Every dime you spend locally will go around and around and around and maybe five times before it leaves town. So please, people, even in these days, respect the economic multiplier and spend all of your money possible locally. The first item on the strategic plan, the wish list, was to make it bright and beautiful again. And so starting on the 1st of August in 1991, 700 different members of this community came down here, gave their time, their talent, and their treasure to start the resurrection, the rehabilitation, the new life of this theater. And, and they scratched down through the walls, found the original colors, and this theater has been repainted and redecorated as it looked in 1904. Maybe a couple of shades lighter, but it's exactly the same color, exactly the same color palette. And then since then, they've gone through the whole wish list and have completely refurbished the, the auditorium. In the last 30 years of the Friends of the Concord City Auditorium, thousands of local people have pitched in to make this theater a jewel box again. Over $2 million raised and invested in this city-owned building without any paid staff and no development director. This is the theater as it is now. This is the view from the stage looking out to the balcony. And this is the view from the back of the first balcony down onto the stage. 
and there was no room for refreshments or people to gather except for the small lobby of en the entrance lobby. And so the friends of the Audi decided that what we really needed was a great reception lobby, a family room. And if you turn your camera around, you'll see the beautiful the beautiful room. On, on this wall are the original plans of the city auditorium from 1904. And so the Friends of the Audi had one project of redoing all of the seats in the theater. An amazing project led by our good friend Betty Hoadley. In five months from the day that the fundraising started and the vendor selected and the project begun to the day when it was all finished and paid for, five months, $104 a seat, 850 seats restored at a total cost of $105,000, raised and paid for in five months, only five contributions over $104. Well, welcome to the stage. You can see that this stage is approximately 25 feet wide and 25 feet deep. And we are very happy that in the past year, the Friends of the Audi were able to redo the stage blacks. They're these curtains. I think that once you've worked backstage at a show, You'll never come and see another performance again in quite the same way when you realize everything that has to happen in the background in order to have the actors on the stage. Some of the historic pieces of this theater also remain. If you can see over here, the original The original footlight trough still remains. There used to, when I first came to this stage back in 1970, there were bulbs, red, white, blue, red, white, blue, red, white, blue, and a big bank over here looked like a, a train engineer station where the light people were like this, working the, the different lights. Now, we're also in the process of completing the curtain project. As I said last year, we got all new black curtains for the stage. And this year, we have the show curtain, the velvet across the front is being replaced. And the wonderful surround of the theater, the arch, the proscenium arch, is being restored with the curtain surround being replaced, rest uh, ref not replaced. Uh, being changed into the, with the same style, um, but the color may be a surprise. Something else wonderful that's happened in this theater recently is the insulation of new red carpets. So when you come in, you are in fact on the red carpet and the city of Concord has very um, kindly done that, um, redone the carpets for us. If you turn, the, there are four floors of dressing rooms right off here to stage left. And perhaps we could go in and see some. They have recently been uh, refurbished by the very talented and kind city a painter, Mr. Ed Bisson, and we are very appreciative of his work. And we think that the acts coming in when we are cooking again will just be delighted to find all of these wonderful upgrades that have been, been happening quite behind the scenes. A lot of people have been quietly working on all kinds of wonderful projects. This is the mechanical fly system and all of these all of these cables ropes are attached to particular pipes up above and this says what what it's for for this is this <coughs> excuse me 
This mechanism runs these legs, you know, the small up and down. We have an award outside from the New Hampshire, uh, New England Theater Conference for the work of the Friends of the Audi as an example for how to work in a public-private partnership. We are partners with the city. Everything that the Friends of the Audi purchase for the auditorium becomes the property of the of the city. So it's just to for people to help each other and to give everybody a shot.